Hello, everyone, and welcome to this edition of the Star Wars Stuff Podcast. My name is David. My name is Ray. And I'm Brooke. And this is where we talk about all things Star Wars. And this past week, we got a relatively surprising story, I think. Uh, Ryan Johnson revealed that he has been to the set. That's not a surprise. And it's the fact that he's dying to direct an episode of The Mandalorian. Of course... Ryan Johnson has a very uh, interesting history, and uh, to say the least. And he, of course, is the director of such films as Brick, Looper, um, critically acclaimed, Knives Out. And he just signed a huge contract with Netflix to do multiple sequels, which uh, Netflix is reportedly going to pay him upwards of $100 million for those sequels. And, of course, we all know that he has been uh, assigned by Kathleen Kennedy to do a trilogy in the future, but I have been one of the people that have been more outspoken about this. I don't think he is going to do a trilogy for the simple fact that he has all these projects lined up. He founded his own production company. There's just simply not enough time for him to jump back to star Wars. And of course he, he has kind of a, um, he had a very mixed reaction uh, with his Star Wars film, The Last Jedi. But of course, that movie made a ton of money. So it's kind of one of those things, will he or won't he ever come back? I don't think he will, like I said. Uh, but uh, he was on the set of The Mandalorian, like I said. And he was in the volume uh, where they had the stagecraft. And he said once the setting shifted, he almost fell over because he kind of got vertigo. But... <laughs> Like I said, he's dying to direct an episode. I'm not sure if it's going to happen. He's super busy. He actually stated that. So what are your guys' opinions on Ryan Johnson coming back to Star Wars, maybe directing an episode of The Mandalorian? I think he deserves a second chance. I mean, just because <laughs> just because the one film like didn't work out, like it's not like he's bad or anything. I would just hope that he just kind of sticks to the vibe that they're going for and not try to put any kind of different artistic spin on it. Cause I think that's what kind of happened with the last Jedi. Yeah. Yeah. I think the, the main issue, like the last Jedi on its own, I think is a good movie, Yeah, but within the context of the whole series, it doesn't flow as well as like yeah. the other ones do. And that's what upset people. So that would be my only hesitation with throwing him into a series is that he would keep the flow. Um, right. But also I think a lot of that was with the writing more so than the directing. Mm -hmm. So if he isn't writing the script, then I don't think there would be any sort of problem because he's a good, I think he's a good director. Um, the performances in that film were amazing. So I think it'd be interesting to yeah. see. I'd also really like him to do like a Star Wars movie, like a standalone, because mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. I think it could be really good. Uh, yeah, agreed. on its own, or like or like his own, like if he was gonna do a three part series, like so, so something that was just his, so that it was a continuous like his flow kind of thing. That could yeah. be really cool. Yeah, and Ryan has done interviews in the past, and of course, whatever he's promoting the interviewers always is going to ask him about Star Wars. And he's always said, yeah, we're working on the trilogy. Yeah, we're working on it. It's, I mean, we're, it's, it's still a thing. It's still happening. And every time he says that a new article comes out, Ryan is still working on it. But I think when you're in Hollywood and you have multiple projects assigned to you, I mean, you're not going to say, yeah, well, I'm done with it. I mean, you're not going to make like, right. Also, it's kind of not their business. Yeah, yeah. Like, when news comes out, news will come out. You'll know when you're supposed to know. Yeah, it's kind of one of those gray areas, you know. Yeah. I mean, you're it's an interview. You you're, you're trying to find out information for your website or your publication or whatever. Right. But every time he says, "Yeah, we're working on it. We're working on it," and I I believe him, but I'm not quite sure he's as confident now that it's going to happen. And back at the investor day call when they announced Taika Waititi doing a film, um, it almost kind of felt to me like he kind of took over what Ryan was going to do. 
and Taika is going to do an, an all new original film, not a trilogy. And it almost feels like in this day and age of streaming that film trilogies aren't going to work as well because we have six hour long movies now on, on Disney mm-hmm. plus and on Netflix and HBO max. I mean, th- there's, it, it, it's, it's so, I just, I don't want to say better, but to me, it feels better when you have all this time to really concentrate on character and story. Yeah. And it's star Wars. We already have that experience with the Mandalorian season one, season two. And I suspect the book of Boba Fett is going to knock it out of the park as well, because that's something that John Favreau has really been intimately working on the script and the story probably for decades now. Mm-hmm. And it, it feels like it's sacrilege to kind of say it, but streaming is the way to go for star Wars. And I think standalones would probably be a better option. And of course we have rogue one, which I think it's universally accepted just like one Mandalorian. The one but then the we best. have solo, which is, we always talk about on the podcast. It didn't perform as well. It's fine. Yeah. And we have the movement for Solo 2 happening. Uh, but. I don't know about like Solo 2, but I would be interested mm-hmm. to see like Kira. Yeah. Like, right. so it wouldn't necessarily be like Solo 2, but like a continuation of like, what is she and Maul doing? Like, how did they get to, you know, wherever? That I would be interested to see. But I don't think we need to necessarily see more of Han's backstory. Yeah, cool. I think that's the thing. The thing we've been hoping for is a Crimson Dawn series, but yeah. that didn't get announced. And Amelia Clark just signed on to do a Marvel, Marvel. series. Yeah. So Which not too many people. Exciting. Yeah, yeah, that's exciting for sure. I really um, enjoy her as an actress. So I mean, exciting, but yeah, maybe they'll go. Yeah, and someday. and she was awesome in Game of Thrones, mm-hmm. and she was great in Solo too, but. Yeah, it's it's just one of those kind of questions. I mean, is she going to be too busy to to film anything Star Wars related? But I don't know. We shall see. Maybe in the Lando series, it's been very like under the radar, mm-hmm. and Donald Glover hasn't even signed on yet. I always oh. forget about that one. <laughs> like I forget <laughs> I, that's I, even I, a thing. Literally until he said it, I was like, oh yeah, that's that's yeah. A thing. When when you said the Lando series, like. There's a Lando series? It's like, <laughs> oh, right, there is. Because you never hear anything about it. <laughs> I'm thinking Amelia Clark will show up in the Lando series, but she won't be uh, a, a, like a permanent character. Yeah. Um, so, and I'm pretty sure Alden Ehrenreich and Chewbacca are going to show up as well. And they'll, they'll probably be supporting cast. But a lot like Ryan Johnson, Donald Glover signed a huge deal with Amazon. And I think it might be a little bit bigger, but I'm not sure if it pays more than Netflix is paying Ryan Johnson, which is $100 million. That's that's hmm. wild. Trump change. Yeah, that's that's like Monopoly money. <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, if you don't want it, I'll take it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I'm of the mind. I didn't... I, I mean, it, it's complicated, my feelings for The Last Jedi. I, I feel like as time goes on, I'll probably like it more and more. And I do like a lot of aspects of the film. And there I like the fact. There's some good like moments yeah. in it. Like I'm not going to discredit the whole movie, but I think as a whole just wasn't it for me. Yeah. Yeah. When I, I saw it a couple times in theaters and when I first saw it, it felt long to me. Like by the time we got to, um, Holdo going into hyperspace and just crashing through that ship. I thought that was like, it like that was going to be like the final part of the film and we still had like a whole chunk to go and so i was like wait i thought we were like wrapping everything up but no we still got like the whole final battle yeah so that's i think that's the part that gets me is just the editing because yeah i get what you're saying it, that's it my only complaint long but at the same time it didn't feel like a whole lot happened yeah like, if you think about it, like, it went over the course of, like, kind of a short time span. Mm-hmm. So, like, I just felt like not a whole lot happened. So, did you guys think that there was issues with, like, the speakers when the Holdo maneuver happened and it just went silent? 
Or did you think that was no. actually part of the sound design? I I thought it was part of it. I didn't get any weird. Yeah. Okay, because a lot of people thought that there was issues with like the audio or something. And oh, it's like that was no. And I think yeah, there was I a didn't... warning in some theaters that hey, look, there's a part of this movie where it just goes silent and it, it's oh, it, it's funny. okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think I when I first saw it, I didn't really notice that. Um it just blended in with the editing. Uh, but then I heard about like people were like concerned about the sudden silence. And so when I saw it the second time, I was like, oh, I could see that. Yeah, it was that that whole scene was pretty epic. Yeah. Um, yeah, I did really like that scene. So in other news, uh, casting for Obi-Wan happened and um, an actress uh, creator uh, named Maya Erskine was cast to be in Obi-Wan Kenobi, which um, she is actually a star and co-creator of a Hulu original comedy called Pen15. Um, so we don't know who she's playing exactly. And uh, she wasn't um, in that big drop of casting. So this is uh, something brand new. And this was uh, reported by Deadline. Um, so yeah, she's... She's an actress I'm not familiar with. There's a picture of her right there. Um, I'm not familiar with her either. Yeah, I don't know. I just did a quick scroll through her films and it doesn't look like I've really seen any of them. Yeah, which can be a really good sign. It, collecting talent, I think, is, oh, yeah. is a very important thing to do, especially for Star Wars. Any any uh, studio, I mean, just acquiring talent. Um because and I love seeing actors that I've like never seen before because it's like it's fresh, it's new. Yeah, yeah, she seems like she's just a talent that they acquired. A lot like Deborah Chow, uh, she's she did a lot of film or actually a lot of TV, and um, she knocked it out of the part with The Mandalorian season one, uh, with the two episodes she did. And Kathleen Kennedy handed her Obi Wan Kenobi, and when you see Deborah Chow um, in the behind the scenes, she seems like she's really into star wars and directing and she's she really feel like feels like a like a film geek in a way you know i mean she's i mean this is like her life you know and she she's she's done such a great job and it it's just that feeling you get when you hear certain people talk and hear how other people talk about them it's like you know you're in good hands yeah, I and, love watching all the like Star Wars behind the scenes stuff recently just because yeah. it seems like everyone is just like they're just playing. Like yes. everyone who's been a part of these projects is just like it's not like even work to them. They're just like literally playing and having the absolute best time. And I just I absolutely love it. I think that's so awesome. Yeah, I'm glad that you're you just said that because I think it, it feels a lot like to me that some of the kind of uh, finer details and kind of the things that I perceive sometimes other people don't perceive, but yeah, totally. I see that on set and uh, speaking with people like Dominic Pace, who was Gecko, uh, the bounty hunter in the Mandalorian. He talked about how easygoing it was with mm -hmm. Filoni and Favreau and how it's, it doesn't feel like there's a whole lot of pressure, even though, I mean, it was the first star Wars series. So yeah, there was enormous expectations and enormous pressure. And it's just, getting the right people together to to create something of this magnitude. Just a bunch of people getting together who absolutely love Star Wars. Yeah. Just getting to be a part of it. Yeah. I, I wonder how big a Star Wars fan Maya is, Maya Erskine. Um, but we shall see. But the other interesting kind of tidbit that came out of this article that Deadline published was that they're saying that they're confirming that the show will be um, six hour long episodes and Mandalorian. Or no, for Obi-Wan Kenobi. For Obi-Wan Kenobi. <clears throat> so, yeah, it's it's something that's been kind of debated. Um, and uh, I think several people have told me, yeah, I, I thought it was actually eight episodes. Some people have thought like nine, ten. I don't know if they're getting that confused with like Marvel shows. Yeah. But yeah, it's um, it's gonna the Obi Wan Kenobi show is gonna take place ten years after Revenge of the Sith, uh, so that was another kind of tidbit that was kind of wondered about and argued about. But yeah, it's ten years after Revenge of the Sith, 
That's when it's taking place. So we'll get a 10 year old Luke. Presumably. Mm -hmm. I'm excited to see that. Yeah. And how much that actor will interact uh, in the show and how much we'll get of him. We don't know, but of course we have Owen Lars played by um, Joel Edgerton, uh, who's reprising his role from episode two and three. And then of course, uh, Brew, Brew Whiteson, uh, who is uh, played by Bonnie Peace, and she's reprising her role as well. So, and Bonnie has done a lot of conventions, so she's actually really active in the Star Wars community. Which I love to see those actors come back after they they've been on a kind of a hiatus, and I, and I love the continuity of that. Mm -hmm. And I think that's that was one of the kind of big aspects for me when I was younger uh, when they announced the prequels happening and that just kind of blew my mind how they were going to go back in time find younger actors that looked like Alec Guinness and kind of look like um, a predicted version of Anakin Skywalker which I would dreamt about for decades but yeah, I, the hype for Obi-Wan has kind of already started. <laughs> it's really small for me right now, but I think the closer we get, it's I might just be uncontrollable with it. <laughs> <laughs> now, how old is Luke in A New Hope? Luke is around 18, 19. Okay, so it's it's yeah. right at the half. So Obi-Wan Kenobi is going to be like yeah. at the halfway point between episode three and four then. Yeah. Okay. More or less, yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of possibilities for a lot of different things. And, of course, we're going to get the epic rematch with Darth Vader. But Hayden Christensen has been cast. So the question is, how are we going to see Hayden acting on screen uh, yeah. opposite Obi-Wan Kenobi? So my theory, which I think a lot of people have kind of come to this kind of commonsensical theory that I kind of thought of, is the fact that the way we can see Hayden is maybe through um, going back to the Last Jedi, the uh, FaceTime, Skype, Force time between oh. Obi Wan and Anakin. So that's a possibility because, of course, we all know Vader is encased in the cybernetics and the shielding, the armor, um, and Anakin's probably going to wear the suit. He's probably going to beg again. I, I always found it uh, interesting and cool. And I would have done the same thing too if I played the part of Anakin. It's like, yeah, you got to be in the suit. There's no way you can't be in the suit at the very end. So I'm almost, so I'm also wondering because if they're going to do any like redesigns to the suit, mm -hmm. because obviously they've redesigned the legacy saber throughout the original trilogy. It's like, it looks pretty different in every movie. Mm -hmm. So they clearly don't have any issues with redesigning something that would uh, have issue with continuity. So I'm wondering if Darth Vader will get any kind of redesign or not. Like clearly I... not the helmet, but like the suit and like the chest piece. If like it's going to be the classic what we see in uh, the original trilogy or if they'll give it like a little touch up. Yeah, a lot of films do that for um, suits. Um, Star Wars did it between A New Hope and Empire Strikes Back. If you notice in A New Hope, if you look at the lenses in the Vader helmet, they have like a reddish tint. And on Disney+, Plus, if you watch it in 4K, you can actually see David Prowse's eyes if you look very carefully. <laughs> <laughs> Oof. But, but in The Empire Strikes Back, it's a solid black. And it's the, the armor is a whole lot more shinier. And I'm not quite sure if they thought it all the way through. Uh, the fact that, uh, of course, Star Wars got immensely popular and, and huge after that. But yeah, there was a slight redesign. Um, and of course, other films have done that too to popular characters. And I wouldn't be totally against that. Um, like you said, it's the halfway point. So we haven't seen Vader in this particular time frame um and of course we'll probably see anakin's body and maybe back to a lot like rogue one uh, we might see him in his like uh, his chamber that uh, we kind of saw him in the empire strikes back um but i think there's going to be some type of like force time 
situation. So we can actually see the actor, which is Hayden Christensen, interact with maybe Obi-Wan or um, whatever he's trying to uh, commune with. Maybe maybe there's a scene where he communes with uh, Qui-Gon. Maybe Qui-Gon tries to um, intervene in the whole situation. And we see kind of a play between those two characters. Now, is James Earl Jones coming back? I was literally just going to ask that question because I haven't seen anything about that. And I like wasn't even thinking about it. But like you kind of can't have Darth Vader without James Earl Jones. Well, you're not going to have Hayden Christensen try to do the Darth Vader voice. No. And because so you in have Revenge to... of the Sith, it was James Earl yeah, Jones. Yeah, because if you have uh, Darth Vader, you're either going to cast like the voice actor for that or get James Earl Jones, which makes me think that they're bringing, like, then you wouldn't have to bring Hayden back if he's just in the suit. So that makes me think we're going to see Anakin. Right. I imagine we'll have some kind of like flashbacks and yeah. stuff. Um, Cause it, there it was Hayden in the suit. I still think that's really cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm definitely anticipating flashbacks to the clone wars. Uh, that's something I think everyone wants to see. I want to see yeah. those costumes live action, man. Oh, yes. Yeah, Ahsoka showing up too would be great. I would cry. Yeah, that would be. Yeah, no, that would be really cool. That would be great. Because I'm and curious it... if she ever found out that Obi Wan lived. Like, we don't really know. Do we know? Uh, like, I don't. I don't think. I don't think that it was ever talked about if she knows yeah i don't think she actually Ooh, does lit. um i know you read the like, ahsoka novel so i no, think you I would know it really didn't mention it yeah so it's yeah she probably has no idea all the jedi are so scattered that survived um that i think there was risk in trying to contact other jedi and right. i think some jedi went kind of rogue um but yeah, uh, James Earl Jones was not uh, in the casting, and of course I he's just looked. Now I'm scared. I know. Yeah, I'm he's a, a, I'm a he's, little. <laughs> yeah, he's very up there in age. Even in Rogue One, the voice was a little off because he's a little older now, and I think they didn't really uh, do anything to his voice. But um, I'm really surprised with technology. Um, we haven't figured out how to duplicate people's voices and have them speak 100% uh, as a cloned voice yet because otherwise they just do that right there's really good impersonators too there are yeah really good impersonators but I can still tell that that's not the voice you know what I'm saying they've had such an iconic voice yeah they've had so many actors attempt it and it's all good and great but right I mean this is a this is going to be a huge series Obi Wan Kenobi, and I think the anticipation is going to be a lot like a saga film, because I think it's going to be the closest thing to a saga film um, since Rogue One um, for the original trilogy. Uh, of course, we have the sequel trilogy, but uh, I mean, to that for that time frame on the timeline, it's um, it's going to bring it back. A lot of the hardcores, a lot of the hardcore old school fans are going to be um, very scrutinizing <laughs> on <laughs> on what happens. And I played episode four, uh, A New Hope, a couple days ago, and I was listening to all the lines that that Uncle Owen was saying and the look that Baru gives them, and it's like, how how can how are they weaving in the Obi Wan storyline to kind of fit? everything and of course the classic line that vader has on the death star i haven't felt this present since it's like that was great that george lucas left it so open-ended like that right. because now they can that now a, a whole series is luck. being born yeah yeah that's exactly because, what that was like since when we always assumed it was since since mustafar they fought right on, yeah yeah but in, i in guess the technically it could have been since something else yeah yeah which is which is wonderful now that we have Disney Plus. We love loopholes. <laughs> so another but, news. Oh, go ahead. Okay. We're, when you were talking about the stuff that Uncle Owen says and the looks that Aunt Beru has and how we had 
talked previously how there really wasn't like a full-fledged plan for the original mm -hmm. trilogy because mm -hmm. like Luke and Leia weren't originally siblings. Mm -hmm. How much did they know? Like, was Vader always Luke's dad? No. I don't think so, no. Okay. No. So then is there really no context to her looks for that? Like, are we giving it context with the other information that we know? Because like, clearly she wouldn't be... Well, it was all in George Lucas's aim for a used universe, that there was a whole big history before we saw Star Wars. Um, so that was like the genius of George Lucas, that he mm -hmm. made it seem like all this other stuff had happened, even though clearly he hadn't thought out much of it. He had outlines for stuff, but yeah, I mean, that's just the brilliance and um, one of the first kind of films to do something like that. Um, I think in in the in the book world that's that's been done a lot, but it was really the first time um, that anything had been done like that for a very uh, for a studio film, and of course that just added to uh, the shock and awe that people had when they saw that film back in 1977, and it was Episode Four, not at the very beginning either. That was added on after the fact mm -hmm. as well. It just said Star Wars. Uh, when the opening mm -hmm. crawl hit back in 1977. So yeah, George Lucas went back and he kind of retconned a lot of stuff. The siblings, Vader being the dad. Um, I just think it's so crazy that Vader, you know, in is it German, that it means father or... Uh, I believe Dutch. Dutch? What? Yeah. I think I'm it's sorry. German. I, I, I don't remember. I just know in, to Google another, it. in another language, it means <laughs> father. And just the just I just it's, I find it so hard to believe that that wasn't the plan the whole time because what a coincidence! Yeah, it was a coincidence. You know, it was a coincidence. Like that, what that a crazy wasn't good purpose. coincidence! Right, like then it makes me wonder, like how did he come up with that that name? Right. Yeah, like, it's what, a, what made him? It's a German Dutch. Uh, it's a mixture of German and, and Dutch word. Okay, so we're both right. Father. Okay, <laughs> it's cool. See, I think. Cause like, cause Darth, what does Darth mean? Dark. Dark. Okay. So then, yeah, right. Sorry. <laughs> uh, uh, I like, like why can't I think dark. of what it is? I know it. Um, like so, so dark think, father. Like yeah, or like yeah. I always think it'd be like father of darkness. Right. I guess. I guess that can kind of work. But when then I was my a kid, other though. question is, what does Sidious and Maul mean? Does Google know? <laughs> well, to Google. <laughs> yeah, when I was trying to figure out all this stuff when I was a kid, I was like, okay, his name is Darth Vader. What does that mean? So at the very beginning of episode four, he invades. I mean, he's an he's an invader. So that yep. I thought oh. that was the play on that. Yeah. That's just so. what Google sent me. It says okay. Darth Sidious is short for the word insidious, which right. is a form of evil. Darth right. Maul is short for malicious, and Darth Vader is short for invader. Oh, and wow. then Darth Tyrannus is short for tyranny. Yeah, tyrannical. Huh. Yeah, that's cool. I had never put those together. Yeah, I never really thought about that, but I've always mm -hmm. wondered, like, if Darth Vader is like Dark Father, then what do the others mean? But okay, so it, that, it, that's, that's more of a coincidence. coincidence. That's yeah, it's wild. coincidence. That is that is wild. <laughs> yeah, if you sign up for a free trial on Audible, you can actually find a book called The Secret History of Star Wars. And they kind of talk about that in depth. The book is like insanely long, though. I haven't even finished it. I know James started it, but uh, it's narrated by a guy named Josh Robert Thompson. And um, he does the world's best impersonation of George Lucas's voice. And he impersonates everyone's voice that's like speaking mm -hmm. uh, when he's quoting them. But yeah, he is the best uh, at uh, impersonating. And he at, was actually at Celebration 2015, dressed up as George Lucas with the, with a white wig, oh, that's funny. like a, a neck piece, and a flannel shirt. And he and he was holding. He took a doll of Jar Jar Binks, and uh, he was trying. He was just kind of. I mean, it was all in fun. He he loved hey, George yeah. Lucas. He loved Star Wars. He's a huge fan, and uh, he was arguing with fans about the. Uh, uh, the fact that Jar Jar was was the best character out of any Star Wars film, and yeah, it's it, there's videos online of him at Celebration. 
I never ran into him. I don't think I ever saw him. But uh, he was also, uh, I think his biggest claim to fame is him being the robot Jeff on The Late Show with Craig Ferguson. He was the operator. He was the puppeteer and the voice. So, yeah, that show's been off the air for a while. James Corden's show is a show that replaced him. Okay. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> I know no, the I know James Corden. Right, <laughs> yeah. I know that. I don't so. know. I don't really pay attention to like late shows and stuff, so I, I wouldn't know I anyway. Either. It could be I'll on right like, now, and I wouldn't know. Yeah. yeah, I usually like catch like clips and things, but like I don't watch it. It's late. I'm sleeping. Right. And hopefully, in the future, we can get Josh Robert Thompson as a guest on the show. Oh, um, heck yeah. I think he's done several podcasts. So, so in other news, uh, Star Wars Andor is currently filming in Essex, uh, United Kingdom, at a refinery. And I believe this is the picture of said refinery. So, Which looks really cool. Like, that looks like some place on a distant planet in the Star Wars universe. Yeah, it, it looks does dystopian. Seem, yeah. yeah. Yeah, seems very Orwellian. So they are set dressing it, of course, and make it look more Star Warsy. And um, there are other pictures of cranes with massive kind of billboard looking sections of blue screen and green screen out there um, so they can add the background. So it's almost like they're approaching Andor like it's going to be a feature film, even though it's going to be a series. And Andor, I think, is flying under the radar very nicely. A kind of, kind of a lot like Rogue One did. I think a lot of people had concerns and were kind of curious about the production of Rogue One and the fact that we had these characters that we didn't know if they were going to live or die. And of course, Kathleen Kennedy thought the only way to go was everyone die. But of course, with Andor, we get to go back in time, back. A, a prequel to the prequel, and get more of Cassian Andor's backstory. Hopefully we get to see him at age six when uh, he started out fighting and <laughs> a cast of so many beloved characters. Um, we know that uh, uh, the actress, I'm forgetting her name right now, that played Mon Mothma, uh, Genevieve O'Reilly. She's going to be back. She looks exactly like Mon Mothma. Of course, we think Bell Organa is going to show up, but yeah, I think the more time passes, Rogue One is one of my more favorite Star Wars films and films that I'll put on in the background. And, and just... It's definitely one of mine. I just thought it was so well done. Yeah. And the characters were awesome. Like, sad that they died. And not, not that I like like death but i kind of like that they died because it just it felt very real mm -hmm. like you know it's it's a war like we're used to all of our favorite main characters living so it was kind mm -hmm. of like refreshing to see like you know like this is real like not everybody makes it out just because they're your favorite um but yeah i loved rogue one so i'm excited to get to see cassian and them do more yeah, with all the behind the scenes, that behind the scenes reel we got, and then all the artwork, it looks pretty epic. It looks like they're treating it like a feature film, which they should. I mean, for all these mm -hmm. Disney Plus shows, and I'm hoping, I'm hoping that we get Gareth Edwards, the director of Rogue One, back in in some capacity. I was at the panel in 2015 uh, at Star Wars Celebration. And he seems like just such a cool guy, a huge, hardcore Star Wars fan. And, of course, we all kind of know the story, and we've talked about it, how they really weren't satisfied with what he shot. So they brought in Tony Gilroy, who's now heading up Andor. But it feels like I think I have a spot in, in like my Star Wars heart for Gareth Edwards because just – to see his fandom and it, it was, it was almost like one of us getting to direct a star Wars film. And I always think back to that time period, 2014, 2015 and think back the amount of pressure that a star Wars fan would have on them to direct a star Wars film would just be incredibly intense 
And the fact that Tony Gilroy came out and said, I'm not a fan of Star Wars. I'm just doing this because it's 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 the genre that I like to do, espionage, you know, just like the Bourne films. He mm-hmm. he headed up those films. So um, sometimes that works out more in our favor. And then sometimes it's not um, what Lucasfilm wants. But uh, yeah, I just couldn't imagine uh, trying to work and do my day job in Star Wars because I'm such a huge fan. And I mean, who knows what happened? I don't know. But of course, Gareth Edwards did appear in The Last Jedi uh, at the very end of the crate battle. And uh, I think he returned the favor to Ryan Johnson. Uh, He was one of the uh, technicians on the Death Star. The guy that does this when they shoot the laser, which is kind of comical. Um but it's a, uh, it's a natural response. If someone's yeah. shooting something at me, I'm, no matter what it is, I'm going <laughs> to, that is a very natural response. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I'm hoping that Gareth Edwards somehow, some way comes back. I, I hope he's still like in the family, you know, mm-hmm. um, I, I hope he, because he totally, a lot of people say this and I, I don't think there's any other way to say this, but yeah, he totally played ball with Lucasfilm. He did whatever they told him. They wanted him to do. And um, I've looked at his like IMDb and to, to see what other projects. He hasn't had a lot of projects um, in the pipeline. I think he has one uh, that uh, I think he's kind of working on. He's not directing, but uh, he's still out there. Um, he was an indie director. But yeah, I, I think about the dude a lot. And hopefully he can be a guest on our podcast. I don't know. <laughs> I mean... That'd be cool. Yeah. So I, I think Andor is is going to be pleasantly surprising to to a lot of people. So I'm I'm really hyped for it. And I didn't mention this, but Diego Luna and Tony Gilroy were spotted at that that um, refinery. So yeah, it's uh, it's most likely going to be in in the show. Um, and another piece of news um, relating back to uh, a former film, The Rise of Skywalker, uh, there was um, a set designer, I believe. He did an interview where he talked about how um, there was a character that never appeared that was cut from the film. Mm-hmm. But this character was the the designer of the Millennium Falcon. And um, like the original the OG design. Yes. Like? Yes. Okay. So this character was set out to be the original designer of the millennium Falcon. And there was a piece of hardware um, that this character was going to help out with uh, to stop the uh, first order. And the character that they had in mind, which is crazy uh, to think about it now. And in, in hindsight, the character they had in mind was Judy Dench. The actress, Dame Judy Dench, I love her. That's interesting. I love Judy Dench. I would love Mm -hmm. to see her in Star Wars. Oh heck yeah! Yeah, which what I think would have made a lot of sense because they were in her country filming, and I mean she's just one of the best actresses of all time, and she does a lot of stuff. She does TV. She does film. She does stage. I mean, it, and to see her perform, it's like, wow, it's it's incredible. And she's done interviews, and she's n- never anything like the characters she portrays. I mean, of yes. course, I mean, it's, it's, I mean, she's an actress. I mean, she's going to be different, of course. But it seems like she reaches a place that not too many actors have ever reached acting. And I, I think she's she's just one of the greatest actresses actresses actors of all time so yeah i she does serious stuff well she does comedy well i she also she does like the does it all really blunt comedy which is amazing her grandson is on tiktok and does tiktoks with her that's incredible and so she does oh tiktok dances now <laughs> do you <gasps> I need to know. Can you send that like that profile? Yes, I I I need to follow this. Oh my! At least I think it's her grandson. They're related. Okay. Doesn't matter the relation. I just, I I just need to see this. Oh my gosh. 
Wow, that's incredible. Yeah, I'm gonna have to and check that I, out. Oh, I, I love really stumbling up, upon like famous people on TikTok. Like, um, oh my gosh, I don't know her name, but she played in the episode with of the Mandalorian with Ahsoka. She was the the head lady. I'm totally blanking on what they called her, but like her son is on TikTok, and so yeah. she'll like randomly go up on her and be like, "Hey, mom, where's Thrawn?" And she'll yeah. be like, "I can't <laughs> tell you." <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's awesome. So Hasbro announced uh, new six-inch figures for the Clone Wars. Um, I got some pictures here. And we have uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi. Uh, we have Echo. We have Anakin. And we have a clone pilot, which I don't think they've released uh, many toys of. But they kind that. of have the that classic packaging. Yeah, I don't reckon... Was he in like the shows or anything? Because I do not recognize that pilot. Yeah, the Clone Wars. So we've seen pilots. Uh, I think we ha had a, a brief shot in Revenge of the Sith okay. of a uh, clone pilot. But he doesn't look like this pilot. But here we can see the packaging. Uh, it's kind of like the classic packaging that we had mm -hmm. in the past. And of course, the uh, logo for the 50th anniversary of Lucasfilm. And is that is that this year? Yeah, they're going to be released uh, this year. Okay. Um, they're six inch figures, so the classic figures are three point five inch, which of course a lot of the hardcore fans love and want more of. Mm -hmm. But to me, I feel like the six inch figures are always the way to go because you get more detail, mm -hmm. you get more articulation. I don't play with toys anymore, but I do like to collect them, um, I and that. I know. I know Colin loves them as well. When we were at uh, Chicago Celebration, oh, yeah. he bought a whole bunch of them. And we we put them up on display. So like we we like the the slightly larger ones too cuz they're going to look better on our on our shelves. Yeah. And here's some individual pictures of them. And of course, Echo's going to be in uh, the Bad Batch. Mm -hmm. Coming up here next week. Oh my gosh. Wow, next week. <laughs> yeah. Like it does yeah. not feel like yeah. it should be next week already. Yeah. Time flies Strange when you're the passage Star of time. It's right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just, it just keeps going. <laughs> so yeah, the article also said that uh other uh six inch figures uh were going to be released, they just haven't uh, Ahsoka. Probably, yeah. I mean, Is it, I mean more, if we're in a Clone Wars -y mood, yeah. I think they should. Would it out. be more characters from Clone Wars, or is it just more Star Wars characters, or do we not know? I think it's going to just encompass all of the characters that uh, are in Star Wars because it's more of like a 50th anniversary Lucasfilm type of okay. release. Okay. So, yeah, James actually has the Jar Jar Binks and the Qui Gon. So, yeah. Me I didn't too. buy those. Now I'm regretting that. <laughs> <laughs> so another rumor that kind of came out, which is not, uh, I wouldn't call it a huge spoiler. It might be, I don't know. But apparently someone was on set of, uh, I believe it was one of the set, one of the sets that they shoot in Los Angeles that apparently the book of Boba Fett has been shooting on. It's a train yard in Los Angeles. And someone came out with a report saying that they spotted a character that appears to be something akin to a Wookiee. So is it going to be a main character? Are we going to get Chewbacca back? Are we going to get uh, one of the characters from uh, one of the Wookiees from Revenge of the Sith? I don't know. But I thought a while on it. And for me personally, it feels like if they do bring a Wookiee back, which we all might be talking about this, and the Wookiee might just be a background character, and we might be making a big deal about it. But if they do bring a Wookiee back to be a main character, I really wouldn't want it to be Chewbacca. I love Chewie, but that just kind of shrinks the universe, like a lot of people say. Yeah. Um, so a brand new... Uh, Wookiee would be great. Uh, different look, different design. Um, 
I know I got a picture here of, of all <laughs> the Wookiees from episode three. Um, they all look relatively the same. Uh, mm. But yeah, it, it would be pretty cool to get another uh, Wookiee companion maybe. But I also would like for them to go in a different direction with a different type of alien species. Maybe one we haven't seen before. Yeah. But I think it's kind of a mainstay in Star Wars that you have like muscle with you. Um, so what are your guys' think, thoughts on having Wookiees back in the Mandalorian? I mean, I think that would be cool, like, you know, to see one. I I agree with you. I don't really want it to be Chewbacca just because, like you said, it really shrinks the universe. And I think it would be cool to just bring in, even if it's just, you know, for one episode or whatever, just a random Wookiee just to have more, like, diversity in there. Um, yeah. It'd be cool. So what do you think, Ray? I'm trying to think where, because if it was Chewbacca, he wouldn't really be going out on his own. He'd probably be with Han. Yeah. So if we see Chewie, we'd have to see Han. And also, it, I mean, it depends on who says that they saw a Wookiee, but it could always be somebody who doesn't really know what Star Wars is, and they could have seen right. an Ewok for all we know. <laughs> right. This is true. Or it could have been just another, like you said, another big, muscly Star Wars yeah. creature, um, which would also be really cool to see. I I love seeing new creatures. That's why I got really excited reading um Wow. I can't <laughs> today. What's that book that everybody's reading about the High Republic? That yeah, book. Um, and just <laughs> the the <laughs> the diversity of all the different like um, creatures and species. So yeah. I'm kind of an advocate for like bringing in new ones that we haven't really mm-hmm. like explored yet. Um, but I mean, Wookies are also awesome. Like I'm not going to discredit the Wookies. <laughs> yeah, I, I think yeah, the the Wookies are universally loved, and I think we want to see more of, but. Of course, yeah, we want to expand the universe a whole mm-hmm. lot more. But yeah, if if you have Chewbacca showed up, it would be kind of off a little bit. It would bit. be, yeah, it would feel off. It would feel weird. And like Ray yeah. said, like Han would have to be there. And I kind of like that, like the Mandalorian is mostly like its own thing. Like, yeah, we saw Luke, super awesome, super cool. But I kind of like it that it's still exploring different things. Unless Chewie is hanging out with Luke. And we see Luke again. Because we're mm. if we get Grogu back. See, that's my big question about the next season is how, like, what, what they're going to do. Because Grogu was such a big part yeah. of it. And now he's, like, gone. So I'm like, okay, are they going to, like, go through it and then he's going to come back at the end or something? Like, what, what kind of plot are they going for? Like, my mind is just spinning about what they're going to do with this third season. Yeah, that's something I was going to ask you guys. How much Grogu do you think we're going to get in season three? I feel like we're not going to get much. Like, just just me thinking, like, logically, like, what mm. would make sense? Like, I'm thinking maybe he'll come in at the end, like, if, if at all. You know, because I feel like it would be sad not to see him at all. So maybe, like, whatever adventure they're going to go on, he's going to show up at the end. That's kind of what I'm feeling. Yeah, you figure we're going to have to see Luke again at some point. Um, yeah. And Grogu's going to have to come back to the show. Mm-hmm. Uh, but how much are we going to get? I think that's the big question. Yeah. And a lot of people that watch The Mandalorian were watching it for Grogu, Baby Yoda. Yeah. And that's one of the astounding facts that just shocks me every time I hear it. Because when I deliver... And kids are wearing Baby Yoda masks. <laughs> I ask them, you like Star Wars? And sometimes they'll say, what's Star Wars? And it's like, <laughs> yeah. I mean, he, Grogu was absolutely adorable. Yeah. I died when I saw him. So, like, yeah, some people are watching it just to see that cute little baby. I personally watched it for, like, the whole reason. Yeah. But, yeah, there were definitely a lot of people who did that. So, yeah. yeah and a my, lot of people, yeah. My sister watched or both of my sisters watched The Mandalorian. Uh, one of them had uh, gone through and watched all of the movies after the first season. And one of them, I think, has maybe seen A New Hope. 
uh, and she watched the Mandalorian. And so uh, she, she could follow it. She doesn't like star Wars, but she likes the Mandalorian. Oh, interesting. So, okay. It's kind of yeah, weird. I've heard that too. Yeah. Interesting. It, I mean, the Mandalorian was fantastic. So, I mean, like, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. It might also be, there's some sort of like, mind thing that's different between sitting down for two hours watching a movie versus sitting down and watching two to- two hours worth of TV. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like for some reason those are very different. <laughs> I almost feel like it's easier to watch a television show because you kind of get to choose how much you watch. Like you could just watch one episode real quick. You're there for 30, 45 minutes and it's done. Or you could sit and watch 18 hours of it, you know, so you kind of get to choose and I'm like, that's, I'm really digging the Disney Plus shows, like the series, because I feel like you can, that time you can manage. And then also, like, you just get to explore the stories more because you're not confined to, like, a two-hour movie period. Mm-hmm. So I'm really digging the shows, and I hope they keep up with that. Yeah, definitely. What I was going to say was um, a lot of people, I've, I've heard reference The Mandalorian as the Baby Yoda show. And it's like seriously, guys. <laughs> I it's mean, it, called the Mandalorian. <laughs> yeah, and and yeah, it's interesting that, that a lot of people just kind of disconnect it from Star Wars as well. But it is Star Wars. It is very much is kind of in the vein and spirit of the original trilogy, and it's it, that's just an incredible thing that uh, the Mandalorian has done. Just pierce the the zeitgeist of of reality in the way that it has and it's incredible it 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 set the stage for all these shows that have been announced and we're here for it and 2022 guys we're gonna get a bunch of star wars shows we're gonna get star wars shows this year next week with a bad batch but yeah man i'm glad i'm glad though i'm glad it's next week because is Oh, sorry. Is Bad Batch dropping like one episode a week? Yes. Or is it dropping the whole but series? I, I think it's one a week. Yeah, Disney Plus doesn't do uh, the big binge thing. Okay. So, yeah, <laughs> they, they, I kind of like, like a part of me loves to binge. Yeah. But like this way, I have something to look forward to every week. Like it's, yeah. you know, gets me through. Yeah, and then everyone that listens to the podcast <laughs> can be on the same page as us. Yeah. And we kind of talk about it and dissect it and speculate and mm-hmm. that whole thing. It's it's more fun. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. It's also great for the podcast. Yeah. This is we true. Like, we like that. So, Maybe Brooke, what was your favorite episode of The Mandalorian Season 3? Season mean season two? Uh, season 2? Season 2. Season <laughs> 2. I'm, um, I'm, I'm still thinking about Season 3. What? Man, it's got to be the Ahsoka episode. Uh, I just, I love her so much. And just, we got, we just got a lot in that episode. We got Grogu's name and just, I don't know. I loved seeing her. That was really cool. Yeah. I thought that episode's uh, cinematography was fantastic, Mm -hmm. which um, the cinematographer actually just won an award this past week. And yeah, I mean, you look at, (laughs) It a lot of those stills of that episode could be posters easily that I'd want to put on my oh wall. Oh my gosh, yeah, it was and it was yeah, beautiful. just just the lighting. Um, I mean, take a look it's at that. And that's gorgeous. The background that one the, of the moon there my... is the volume. It's it's the stagecraft. Oh my gosh. Yeah, one of my favorite shots is there's a shot of Ahsoka like pressing her head against Grogu's forehead, and it was like my Apple yeah. Watch background for forever, and it was just so cute. Yeah, I just like when we first see Ahsoka, just it's it's so haunting. Just like mm-hmm. in the dark, in the woods, the two sabers. Like, I just I love just, seeing it. I was curious how they were going to like introduce her, and she just literally just came out. She was like, Here yeah. I am, and I was just like, Oh, there awesome. she is, and I was like freaking out. Uh it felt very true to character that she just like bust the door in <laughs> yeah that's that's just okay she's like hello i am here what <laughs> i was not made to be subtle <laughs> no do you know who my adopted fathers are 
<laughs> yeah, and it was perfect casting. If if mm-hmm. aside from Ashley Eckstein, Rosario Dawson did an awesome job. Yeah, with it. she looked incredible. The only thing yeah. is just because I I just uh, words just because we've heard Ashley Eckstein's voice as mm-hmm. Ahsoka. Like if they could have done a dub, that's the only thing that I would have like would have been just the icing on the cake. But um, Rosario Dawson was incredible. Absolutely incredible. So yeah, I definitely want to um, highlight that fact. American Society mm-hmm. of Cinematographers winner, best cinematographer, uh, episode of a half hour series for television, chapter thirteen, The Jedi, Baz Idawine. I believe that's how you pronounce his last name. But yeah, it's awesome. The Mandalorian has won a bunch of awards now, award winning, critically acclaimed, universally loved by Star Wars fans. Favreau. Filoni, all the directors associated, they knocked it out of the park. Absolutely. This, it's it's awesome that this thing exists. Unbelievable. Um, so the other stuff that I kind of wanted to talk about was um, I've heard this for a while and I don't think we've spoken much about it, but there are uh, rumblings, rumors about another Disney Plus show that wasn't announced but uh, there's a very popular character out there, um, and she gets cosplayed all the time at conventions. There's You'll usually see at least one walking the floor, and a lot of Star Wars fans aren't as familiar with her. She was introduced in a comic book line, but it's Dr. Aphra. And there's rumors that a show is going to happen, and the rumored actress for the show is and i and it might be a fan casting these rumors aren't very um they're not coming from sources i trust uh but i mean it's kind of out there in the world that lucasfilm is maybe looking at chloe bennett to play dr afra who is a marvel uh alum uh which she was oh, okay. a main character in uh, agents of shield Mm-hmm. Uh, so she'd kind of she's also she's cast in the new powerpuff girls oh yeah yes. yeah yep. that's correct yep so yeah dr afra is a pretty cool character if you don't know who she is she is a criminal archaeologist with an expert knowledge of droid and weapons technologies she just sounds like a badass like i know nothing yeah. about this girl but just by her title i'm like ooh, she seems okay. cool so criminal archaeologist is that like a criminal who is an archaeologist or it's an archaeologist of criminal things i think she's kind of like indiana jones how she okay she would like steal but then return it to a museum but i don't think she's returning stuff to museums i think she's like almost like she's almost like a great character you know i mean Mm -hmm. she's she's Mm, not light side dark side totally and no. I think she kind of works for Darth Vader. In I was just going to say, line. where yeah. in the like timeline is she? Yeah, so oh. she, I think her first appearance was in a Vader comic book. Um, I'm trying to find it here. Uh, yeah, she was created by a couple of writers, uh, Kieran Gillen and Salvador LaRocca. She first appeared in Marvel Comics, uh, the 2015 Star Wars Darth Vader comic book series. And then, of course, she became a breakout character and she got her own comic book series, uh, which debuted in December of 2016. Uh, She is morally questionable. Uh, She's a criminal archaeologist, like we talked about. And she was initially in the employ of Darth Vader, but later uh, she hid from him. Um, So, okay. So, would this be like, original trilogy timeline uh yeah like a little before i believe okay okay so yeah and she's Maybe she's like actually a, around rogue one or a bit before kind of like in that time yeah yeah definitely um she there's actually a wookie character in there as well and he's not such a great guy either oh no <laughs> and then i think she has a couple of companions that are droids uh, a very like C3PO R2D2 kind of dynamic, but like evil. So I like it. 
Yeah, yeah. That would be cool. Maybe that's the Ewok that somebody saw. Ewok. The Ewok. <laughs> With the Wookiee. <laughs> I don't know what words are. Sometimes they're hard. <laughs> I didn't get any sleep last night, so the fact that I'm functioning and on You're this podcast right. is a miracle. <laughs> yeah, but you're fully vaccinated, though. So I am fully vaccinated. <gasps> oh, yay! I will be on the day after May 4th. Ooh. Uh oh. <laughs> That's why I'll I did there. the day after. That's why, like, okay. I did. I was like, I could have done the day before or the day of, and I was like, uh, uh-uh, I'm Star mm-hmm. Wars Day is Star Wars Day, so I was like, I'll do the day after. Okay. So technically, <laughs> it's another two weeks until I'm fully I mean, vaccinated, true. but I got the shot. Yeah. Get awesome. vaccinated, people. Yeah, for sure. Yep. Get us so, back to normal. Get us back to conventions. Let's go. Yeah, hopefully, yeah, hopefully by twenty twenty two celebration, everything's gonna be all good. And I, can, I would imagine so. At least back to a, a normal enough that we can start like, yeah, get getting back there. Yeah, I, I think the convention's happening, and who knows what it's gonna be like. But yeah, we're all gonna be back in Star Wars mode and mm-hmm. walking the floor, going to panels. I wonder what the panels are going to be like. I wonder if it's going to be tougher to get in the panels. I, I know, know. Like, are they going to have to do like limited capacity? And are we still going to be social distancing at that point? Yeah. It'll be interesting to see what we'll be at at that point. Because what, what month is it that it's supposed it, to be in? August. August. Okay. So that's still a good chunk of the way. Yeah. Through the year. Yep. Definitely. So I got an Oculus Quest. And one of the main reasons I got it was for this Vader Immortal. And there's news uh, if you if you're you looking at the the video, you can see that a special retail edition is coming this spring uh, for the PlayStation. But originally, it was only available for the Quest, um, which is what I have. And it's a very incredible experience. I always talk about going to the void and doing um, that experience at Disney Springs and Disneyland back in 2018. Mm -hmm. And I think that's maybe my favorite Star Wars experience because they put a helmet on you. They put a vest on you. You're totally immersed in the Star Wars world. And the vest you can feel when you're getting shot by blasters. You can feel the heat when you walk. um, Spoiler alert for that experience but you go to uh, Mustafar and you feel the heat rise up from the ground you can't feel all that with with the Oculus but you're holding a controller so when you pick up a lightsaber you can feel the vibration of the lightsaber and you can feel it turn on and you're swinging it and the funny thing is is when I was swinging it and going through kind of the, the tutorial of getting used to like swinging a lightsaber and using a lightsaber in the game. It's like you kind of quickly realize that, yes, we shouldn't be making real life lightsabers for <laughs> popular <laughs> consumption because I would, I would just like cut myself to pieces. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. Even when I just play with my regular old lightsaber, I would have lost my ankles months ago. Like, yeah, <laughs> it's just, I don't know. It's hard. But then I think yeah. back to like, you know, people use regular swords and they were fine. Or did they actually nick themselves more than we think? So then I started questioning because like, is a lightsaber much different than a sword? In like, you know, you can't hit yourself when you, sw- I don't know. Well, I guess with a sword, you have a blunt side, but there's no blunt side to a saber. True. Yeah. I'd be highly skilled to wield a lightsaber. And I am not. Mm-hmm. I hit everything either i drop it i throw it i was not trained properly i can't even handle using ray's staff i'll sling it (laughs) over my back and then i'll bend to pick something up and i smack someone in front of me and behind me (laughs) yeah i've hit colin on multiple occasions (laughs) you probably deserved it (laughs) but yeah the experience is really cool vader immortal uh we were at the panel in 2019 chicago celebration and we saw david goyer 
who uh, is a story developer. He created the story, and the story is canon. And um, you interact, of course, with Darth Vader, and he gets right up in your face, and uh, he gives you a mission to do. And you meet different characters along the way, and it's it's totally immersive. You look around, you can when you go into hyperspace, you can see the stars stretch, and you can look overhead. There's actually um, like a uh, like a windshield you can look at, and you can totally see the star destroyers flying over you. Oh, and cool. It's a, it's a really cool experience if if you have the extra change there to uh, get an Oculus. Um, that's one of the games. That's one of the more popular games to get, and it's it's super fun. It's it's crazy how technology has advanced and where we're at at this stage. And of course, there's the Oculus Rift, which is actually uh, another VR headset that you can buy that connects directly to your PC. And I, I believe the um, the uh, the resolution on that screen is actually better, uh, but yeah, it's it's an incredible thing to be immersed in the Star Wars universe. And I bought the other two episodes, which completes the story. I just haven't played them yet, but it's it's totally cool. It's it's really awesome. It, it brought back so many memories of doing the uh, Void experience at Disney Springs in in California. So I definitely do I know it. they had it in Disney Springs over here in Orlando, mm -hmm. um, but I think they've closed it. Yeah, and COVID I hit think, and they closed all I their think locations. They closed it for good. I don't yeah. believe it's coming back. So Colin and I were really bummed yeah. because we we were here like right before the pandemic hit. Mm -hmm. But I think he needed like a reservation or something. And so like we just hadn't thought about it. We we're like, oh, you know, we'll hit it again some other time. And then COVID happened and they completely shut it down. So that was a bummer. But yeah, there was also a Wreck It Ralph experience as well. And I heard that, that was very good. Oh, I love Wreck It Ralph. I yeah. do too. Yeah. And for the void, there's locations, of course, and at Disney Springs, Disneyland, Anaheim. And then they had one, of course, in Orlando, I believe. And then they had one in Las Vegas, and I believe one was coming to Austin, Texas, but I don't think it ever happened. I think COVID kind of put those plans on hold. So, yeah, that's what happened there. But uh, we did a uh, Patreon episode uh, for the Phantom Menace commentary. It was me, James, Colin, and Ray, and that was a lot of fun. Um, I think all of us on the episode kind of love the phantom menace and that's really kind of our favorite prequel aside from colin who loves revenge of the sith more he but loves revenge of the sith yeah yeah definitely if you want to check that out join our patreon um it is at patreon.com forward slash star wars stuff podcast 2187 and i believe we're going to do an episode two commentary here pretty soon so that uh that that'll be a lot of fun but yeah it was there's so much nostalgia watching episode one i thought back to all the way back to the 1900s 1999 uh going in that theater for the first time and of course you all know i live in a small town so the whole town was there in that theater and it shocked me there was age ranges from like little kids to the very elderly and it was incredible to see just everyone there and yeah, that, that's a memory that I'll, I'll never forget. The anticipation was through the roof. James and I are in total agreement that the anticipation for, for episode one was greater than anything we've seen, including The Force Awakens. And yeah, that's just a, a time that's always going to be um, remembered uh, fondly by old fans like me, I guess. I guess I'm older now. So yeah, it's uh, it was it was so much fun to watch it with you guys. And um, we're of course going to do more and I think Colin really wants to do um, the legacy stuff that they just dropped on on Disney Plus the oh, Ewok God, movies <laughs> oh I'm not going to lie they were uh, painful and yeah. I think after a while I just kind of like started playing on my phone because I just could not <laughs> I couldn't handle it it was <laughs> it was quite bad um, <laughs> I mean I like watch it if you're interested and just kind of see, but um, don't expect much. <laughs> see, I'm not watching it until we do our commentary, so it'll be my raw oh, reactions. Amazing, amazing, amazing. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Um, yeah. Yeah, as a, a little kid. Things. 
Yeah, as as a little kid, I was always searching for more Star Wars. So I saw those movies uh, when I went to go rent VHS tapes. So I rented them and I played them. And I'm like, where's Mark Hamill? Where's Harrison <laughs> Ford? I'm like, what's who's going this? on? <laughs> yeah, who's this little blonde girl? What, what's going on here? So Man, oh, she was video annoying. rental oh. stores. Yeah, yeah. I rented sick. them several times. Go in there every Friday night. Friday night. Get to pick mm-hmm. one out. So exciting. Yeah. yeah. Apparently there's only one blockbuster left. It's in Alaska, yeah. right? Uh, I think I said that on a podcast, but I think that was one of the last ones left. That one closed, and I think the last one left technically is in Oregon. And the reasoning for um, those last blockbusters to exist was pretty cool because uh, they existed because people in those areas didn't have access to broadband internet. So they only had dial up or they'd have to pay for expensive satellite. Therefore, they rented movies. So that was the reason. Is in Oregon. Yeah. And there's a documentary on Netflix if you want to watch it. It's I saw that. Entertaining. That's that's interesting. And yeah, there is a Star Wars connection, actually. The first person you see in the documentary is James Arnold Taylor, who's the voice of Obi-Wan Kenobi and several other characters in the Clone Wars. And yeah, they're all reminiscing about the, the good old days about going to video stores on a Friday night, like you said, Brooke, and picking out one or two movies and that whole experience of walking down the aisles with rows and rows of, of videotapes and later on DVDs and Blu-rays. But yeah, all that stuff is a, a thing of the past. And my family, personally, my wife and kids, that was a tradition for us to go to Blockbuster and go to another chain. That's a lot less renowned. It was called Hastings and there were a uh, book, uh, and they originally they were a record book and VHS store. And then, of course, they evolved to DVDs, CDs um, and books. And I actually had a part time job there for a little while when I first got married. It was pretty cool. They gave us like 30 percent off everything. But of course, they hardly paid us. Yeah. They make a lot of money. So it, it kind of didn't make a whole lot of sense. Um, but uh, you yeah, the occasional. um piece of merchandise yeah i definitely did i did make the make the purchase and of course they sold like toys as well and yeah i really miss that place a lot of people do but of course with the um kind of prominent role that amazon now has in our lives it's like there's and streaming um, yeah it's there, there's no real way to uh, uh kind of go back from that everything kind of changes evolves so but well, I mean, course, Netflix was originally a DVD rental. They would mail you DVDs. And I think Blockbuster did that for a little bit. Yeah, I think Netflix still does that, or do they not? I don't know if they still do it or not. Yeah. Hmm. I'm looking it up because now I'm really curious. Yeah, I think the last yeah. time. Yeah, okay. DVD.netflix.com. Yeah, there's a lot of fans of physical media still. And with like a physical media disc, there's better uh, film quality, audio quality compared to streaming. Uh, you lose a little bit in the uh, in the stream, um, and you see a little bit of pixelation and artifacts on screen that you won't with a 4K disc. So there's that as well. And I think Warner Brothers actually announced this past week that they're going to do away with physical media. Oh. Um, it might be a um, subsidiary of Warner Brothers, uh, one of their arms that has said that they're they're going to do away with it. They're just going to stop producing at a certain point, certain point of time. But I mean, I can I think that's kind of expected though, for all that to kind of go away and for physical media to go the way of like records, what what they did. But then of course they've made a huge resurgence, resurgence yeah. since um, they kind of went away and more generations of of media have been invented but yeah that's um that's basically all i had did you guys want to talk about anything in particular i didn't have anything else no not really i know we talked we addressed mando season three and uh the fact that grogu should reappear but the question is 
how much is he going to reappear? Mm -hmm. I'm I'm kind of interested to see what everyone kind of thinks, so we can kind of go back later and be like, "You're right, or you're wrong." <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, uh, there is an update on our McDonald's toy conversation ah, that okay. we had last time because yeah. uh, we were looking at the lineup of all the McDonald's toys that are available. We were wondering where Ray is. Well, apparently, a friend of mine posted on Facebook. And one of the comments is that someone got a Happy Meal and they got the X-Wing and the bag says Ray. Okay. So it looks nothing like Ray. It's got a very square jaw. The figure does. But it's in a helmet, so you can't really tell. But it's supposedly Ray. But I well, guess they just put her a, in a helmet so boys wouldn't is realize. A, it is a Happy Meal. Uh. It is a happy <laughs> toy, so they're not going to put much detail in there, but like, no. But there's yeah, a difference just, between a stereotypical male chin and a stereotypical female chin when it comes to figures. That's so that's true, and that is yeah. slightly frustrating. Yeah, but yeah, and I wish they had labeled them like really clearly. I mean, that, that yeah. would have been that would have been great. I mean, uh, but yeah, we posted uh, on the Facebook group. Uh, in the Star Wars Stuff Podcast Facebook group. They're selling the Red 5 helmets, so you can buy the helmets, um, the actual helmet that Luke wore in A New Hope and Ray wore in The Rise of Skywalker. So there's a tie-in there. And I think Colin said he was going to buy he was going to buy one. Sam was going to buy yes. one. Yep, on Star Wars Day, they're planning on buying one. I plan on buying a lightsaber. I don't know whose at this point, because it's going to depend on what they have i wish there were openings for the lightsaber experience i've been trying to check every day or so to see but they're they've probably been booked out for months now so i might be buying the skywalker saber or if they get back ahsoka's clone war sabers they will be mine i am really really waiting for them to release the um ray's saber in the black series oh yeah because I would buy that in a heartbeat. Yep. That one would be amazing to have. I mean, they must. That must be coming It's got to be there. in the pipeline. Yeah. That would be a really missed opportunity not to make that one. They'd have to rename. Because it's so weird. When I was in Galaxy's Edge looking at the display of sabers, they have the Skywalker saber, which is the one with like the leather band-aid that she yeah. uses in Rise of Skywalker. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then just like... The regular Skywalker saber is called Ray saber, oh, which really? you would think that should be reversed. You that would think that would be repairing right. the saber would make it more Ray's than it would be I'll Skywalker. Have go, I'll have to go and look the next time I'm somewhere over there because I don't remember. Because like, I I just call it the Skywalker saber, but they started yeah, calling it they started calling it Ray saber probably because that's what was recent she was the most recent one to use it i wish they would just call it anakin saber but whatever um yeah i think the reasoning for that is because she has that yellow bladed saber and that will be yeah. ray's saber yeah right. and it they're should be released in the future they're although have, we don't have name them yeah solid concrete information on when they're going to release that did it say the reforged skywalker saber yes yeah. yeah that's that's what it should be but mm -hmm. yeah, it, yeah, I think I think that one's it's reforged Skywalker, but then before the break, it's Ray. And I was like, you think that would just be Skywalker, and then reforged Skywalker? Yeah, they'll, they'll probably change that, and then we'll have the new staff saber, and it'll be the Ray Skywalker saber. Mm, Chef's kiss. I love it. I love it. So Brooke, you said you're gonna buy a Skywalker saber. Which Skywalker saber is that? The the one no, with the that's. That's the question. Okay. I'm not sure because if I'm think like my heart wants the OG, mm -hmm. but thinking like cosplay wise, I have Ray's Rise of Skywalker, in which I would need the other one to make. You it could look. always um, get a sticker of burn mark and put it on there and then wrap it in like a, the leather band-aid. I know yes. there are people um, in the Ray cosplay community on Facebook uh, who sell 
leather band-aids to put on your sabers. That is actually an incredible idea. Thank you for saying that. That's really okay. That's smart. All right. Saving you money. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. All right. Cool. Yeah. And if you're listening to us on Monday, the next Monday, I will be in Orlando. I will be in Florida. Maybe not Galaxy's Edge because Colin wants me to wait uh, for Star Wars Day. <laughs> so we might do that. We might just ride Star Tours a whole bunch and try Star and experience. Awesome. You yeah, have to ride Star Tours multiple times because there just is an infinite number of things you could possibly get. I still well, have not seen the new one, the Exegol one. I still have uh, not seen that one. Yeah, the last I heard when someone um, had an article on it was there was upwards of 32 different experiences mm. so wow yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and Otherwise, yeah I... you just gotta ride it to try and get the rebel spot listen the last i'm not gonna the last time i went <laughs> i'm tossing my hair i was the rebel spy yeah. that's that's three times now the and... last time i went with my family i was the rebel spy so oh, nice. it's just it's such a good feeling it's so weird i didn't know that was a thing and then all of a sudden a picture flashed on the side they're like we know you have this rebel spy and it was a picture of me and i'm like what? <laughs> <laughs> it's me <laughs> <laughs> yeah when i went with my family back in 2018 i think my wife was a rebel spy and that was That's like awesome. hilarious to me and my kids so, yeah yeah i i love that ride i love it so much so yeah hopefully i will be riding it um next week so i think that's all we had for this show um i definitely do want to uh tell everyone about our patreon of course uh tell them again uh we're gonna do a whole lot more stuff on there commentaries we're gonna be maybe doing a special live broadcast from galaxy's edge for patreon we should so if, so if you want to uh, see that, you can find us at patreon.com uh, forward slash Star Wars Stuff Podcast 287. You can also find us on YouTube, Star Wars Stuff Podcast. We're on TikTok, Twitter at Stuff Pod, Instagram at Star Wars Stuff Podcast. And of course, we're on Facebook. We have a page. We have a group where we put in memes daily and sprinkle information in there occasionally that we talk about on the podcast. So... For Ray, Brooke, and myself, may the force be with you. Always. Always.